Plants vs. Zombies is one of my favorite mobile games of all time, though it didn't start out as one. Released in 2009 by PopCap Games, the studio known for the landmark Peggle and Bookworm titles, Plants vs. Zombies was originally published on PC, but was then ported over to literally every other gaming console known to man, including the Nintendo DS. Who the fuck played Plants vs. Zombies on their DS? But it was the iOS port that launched the game into the spotlight, cementing itself as one of the original classic iPhone games as fast as it was released. Nowadays, the Plants vs. Zombies series is home to two sequels and two spin-off shooters, all of which are licensed by... <laughs> Oh, God damn it! I'm definitely not a strategy or tower defense fan because that genre requires, you know, patience. But there's just something about the gameplay that I find so enjoyable. I have always wanted to give the PC version a try and this seemed like a perfect excuse to finally do so. But in spite of it being visually superior, I ended up downloading the iOS version again to get a feel for the game and then got too far into it to warrant starting the whole game again. So all the footage is from there now, sorry. Could have had the right aspect ratio, but no. And it's here that I unfortunately discovered that they've somehow turn Plants vs. Zombies into Plants vs. Zombies 2. Turns out the apps changed quite a bit from when I used to play it. For one, it's free now, which naturally means that the game absolutely bombards you with ads. God, I love mobile games. There are ads before and after levels now and even during where the game tries to distract you as much as possible to watch a video for an extra item. I don't know what the rakes do and fuck you, I don't want to find out. Would you like to view a video to earn an Explodo nut? But that's what I do every Friday night. And that's why for the authentic Plants vs. Zombies experience, I highly suggest doing this. You also have to put in your age now when you first boot up either game, and yes, I am a 60-year-old man playing Plants vs. Zombies. Now, for those who haven't played it, I should probably explain how this game actually works. You begin life as a homeowner in a brand new neighborhood, which you apparently didn't notice while looking at real estate as home to a zombie infestation. And so, your goal in this game is to prevent the undead from getting into your house by using a wide variety of plants as a defense against them. Which I guess explains to me why old people have such humongous gardens in case some of their old friends try to visit. See, the zombies want brains, and that's why they're headed straight to the house of the greatest plant warfare strategist of all time. It's great to know they aren't entirely carnivorous though, because they seem very keen to eat your plants. You have a bit of time at the beginning of every level to get yourself set up before the zombies figure out how fences work, and you hear this very ominous message. Are coming. Zombies approaching your house ASMR. Beating each level earns you a new plant to add to your arsenal, with one of the first and most important being the sunflower, which is used entirely for generating sun used to buy other plants to place on the field. The first minute or so basically becomes a game of hoping the zombies are slower than your sunflowers are. <laughs> The adventure mode is broken up into five sections, each with ten of their own stages, starting of course with the daytime levels. The very first plant you can use is the pea shooter, which finally gives peas an actual reason to exist instead of just force feeding them to children. Soon after, you unlock the cherry bomb, which can be used to fucking nuke any zombies in a very specific radius. Since eventually the zombies realize that walking directly in a straight line toward gunfire is not a very effective strategy, they soon begin getting creative with their defenses, such as putting traffic cones or metal buckets on their heads. The amount of fear this text instills in me. In the event that you suck at the game like me, you also luckily had a lawnmower in each row to bail you out in case a zombie managed to get through all of your plants. And now that I think about it, why does this guy own five lawnmowers? To better your own defenses, you get the walnut, or as I like to call them, cannon fodder, which can be essentially used as a sacrifice to buy your other plants some time while you get your shit together. The walnuts can take significantly more damage than your average plant, so you'll frequently have ones with their brains half falling out just sitting there. The tiny phone screen does mean you are liable to make some errors though. Fuck! Which thankfully is what the shovel is for, allowing you to dig up plants and undo mistaken placements in case you're a big dumb idiot with big dumb fingers. And if you didn't think the walnuts were suffering enough abuse, they also have dedicated walnut bowling levels where you can now throw them at the zombies just to properly convey to them how utterly expendable their lives are to you. The next plant to be unlocked is the potato mine, which are like cherry bombs that don't cost literally all of your sun, though with the unfortunate downside of requiring patience. Pole vaulting zombies are apparently gifted with Olympian strength as they jump over your plants to attack the ones behind them, which that's such a pain in the ass, damn it. Luckily, you also had the snow pea, which was a more expensive pea shooter that could also slow the zombies down. Uh more. Then there's the Chomper, which can vore zombies in one hit, but are vulnerable as they spend the next 10 hours chewing. And the Repeater. 
Ah, I get it. Which fire is two peas and so naturally costs twice as much. Eventually, by this point, you end up with so many plants that you have to choose which ones to bring with you into battle, as you only have a limited number of positions. Sorry, Cherry Bomb, we're gonna have to let you go. But thankfully, the game does show you which zombies you're up against beforehand to allow you to adequately prepare. And it's through this that you get to learn what plants are best for countering certain zombies. This also means that you can voluntarily decide to enter levels without any sunflowers at all, which I can imagine would certainly make for some very exciting gameplay. No! Gradually, you can even get to the point where there's not even any room in the garden for zombies. <laughs> Come at me now, you undead fucks! The penultimate level of each section also has a note from the zombies prior to their final invasion. Ah, oh, cool. Oh! Well, it's at least very nice of them to give us a heads up. Beating this final day level unlocks you the nighttime stages, which along with the other sections of the game, change up the gameplay a lot more than just adding a new plant. And here's Crazy Dave to explain just that. <laughs> During the night levels, you obviously don't get any more help from the sun, though luckily your sunflowers still work somehow. And it's during these stages that you realize just how much you took that falling sun for granted. Brains. Oh my god, do something! To make up for it, you're given puff shrooms, which serve as simpler pea shooters that don't cost you any sun, and are blind, apparently. <sighs> There's also now graves scattered all over your garden, which the zombies can spawn from at random, which you're thankfully able to remove with the later plant, the Grave Buster. Dun, dun. With new plants come new zombies though, like the newspaper zombie that goes absolutely ballistic as soon as you interrupt them finishing their Sudoku puzzle. There's also now screen door zombies. I don't even want to know where they got that. And dancing zombies who turn every graveyard into a raveyard. They attack by aggressively dancing. How amazing is that? To aid your ailing sunflowers, you also now have sun shrooms, which serve as their moonlight counterpart, who start off by only giving you half the regular amount of sun until after what feels like five hours actually working. By this point, you also unlock Crazy Dave's shop, where you can buy mini games and other items with the money you earn during levels. I never cared much for these games, but they are further ways to shake up the gameplay if you so desire, such as the zombie botany mini game, where the zombies give you a taste of your own medicine by walking in a straight line, but this time using the decapitated heads of your own plants. Thank god for walnuts. You can also buy actually helpful things like an extra seed slot. Dude, I'm literally fighting for my life trying to stop myself from being eaten by flesh hungry zombies. Can you not charge me right now? A few levels into the night mode and you can also unlock the Suburban Almanac, which chronicle all of the plants and zombies you unlock. A book that I would spend way too long reading through as a kid for some reason. Although maybe it had something to do with the funny descriptions they put for each character. Dolphin Rider Zombies. The dolphin is also a zombie. Instead of walnut bowling, this time we have whack a zombie, possibly the easiest of all the game modes since all you had to do was tap as soon as a zombie appeared to basically orbital strike them with your finger. And I must admit it is very satisfying getting to beat the shit out of a buckethead zombie. But it's on the next level that you unlock the worst zombie of them all, the football zombie. Basically as bad as the buckethead zombies except they're fast and literally invincible. Continuing with the shroom theme are the glow mushrooms that turn zombies onto your side, where they will then do nothing but slowly walk to their death but this time in the other direction. And the scaredy shrooms, which remind me way too much of the skinny Mario from Mario Maker. Unlike other mushrooms, these ones can shoot long range but hide whenever enemies get close. And honestly, at this point in the game, I can't say I blame them. There's the ice shroom, which is my panic button, letting you freeze all the zombies on the screen temporarily. And the doom shroom, which serves as a better but more expensive version of the cherry bomb but leaves a crater when they explode, meaning you can't plant anything in their wake for a while. Surviving until the ninth night earns you yet another adorable message from the zombies. It really bothers me that these guys can spell better than some comments I've read on YouTube. The tenth and final level of each section replaces the sunflower mechanic with a conveyor belt. It gives you an infinite number of random plants to use against the largest horde of zombies yet. Beating this unlocks you a lily pad, which you'll need for the next stage of the game. The pool levels. The mushrooms are useless now since they fall asleep during the day. Not that I'll miss them, to be honest. So your new main focus is using lily pads to place plants in the pool. And of course, the zombies have also learned how to swim, so now you have that to worry about. Your new weapons this time include the squash, which does exactly what the very obvious pun would suggest. The jalapeno, which wipes out an entire lane of zombies. They're essentially lawnmowers, but you don't have to wait until every single one of your plants are wiped out to use them. The three-peater. <laughs> I still get it. And your zombie opponents are... Scuba diver zombies! That bitch just ate my three Peter! Your counter to these is the Tangle Kelp, which serves as the aquatic version of the Chompers by pulling zombies underwater and doing unholy things to them below. 
Uh, tiny zombies! Another new enemy are the Zombonies, which are like football zombies, but worse in every single way, because these guys one-shot everything they touch, including your walnuts, poor guys. Your defense for these is the spike weed, which pop the tires of vehicles and damage zombies that trample them. And yet they still continue to walk in a straight line! Another upgrade for the pea shooters is the torchwood, that turns any pea shooter ammo it touches into fireballs, which meant that I would always have a million of them on the field at once, because fireballs are awesome. I also really like that if you use it in conjunction with a snow pea, it reverts it back to regular. Ammo. Very clever game. You're also given the toll nut, which can't be vaulted over, but is also more visibly distraught about being slowly eaten to death. And now there's a fucking zombie sled team. What the fuck are these zombies doing? So we've been cruising along so far and having, you know, quite a bit of fun, okay? Well, now it's time for things to get serious. The fog levels. This all begins with the unlock of the sea shroom, whose purpose I think is pretty self-explanatory. The gimmick here is not only are they pool levels at night, but there's also now a large amount of fog obscuring a pretty sizable portion of the screen and preventing you from seeing what zombies are coming. Which meant I always felt kind of bad about the plants I would toss right into it. To combat this are the plant turns, which illuminate the foggy sections, but were also a favorite target for the zombies to go straight forward. So, your next new plant is the cactus, which pops balloons? Wait, what balloon? <laughs> Luckily, it doesn't take too long from there to acquire the Blover, a plant that politely tells them to fuck off. It's at this point you can also buy plant upgrades from Crazy Dave's shop, such as the Double Sunflower or Gatling Pea. But honestly, I'm not too keen on buying anything for this guy. <laughs> Level 5 of the Fog introduces yet another one-time only game mode where you have to smash vases that spawn both zombies and plants for you to plant. <laughs> Damn it! Introducing yet another horrific pea shooter mutation is the split pea that fires in both directions so you can finally take down the zombies that keep bypassing the entirety of your defenses. Such as the miner zombie, who decides to just go fuck it and do the whole thing backwards, get away from me, and much like the miners they share a name with, they are extremely annoying and never appreciated. Considering how things start off so slow and methodical, it is very satisfying to see it become such a chaotic battlefield by this point in the game. Certainly not helped by the unlocking of the star fruit, which fires in all five directions to put even more shit on the screen. As well as the pumpkin, which serves as an extra layer of protection to the plant you attach it to. And I'm pretty sure putting this on a wall not makes them invincible. Then there's the magnet, which removes the helmets and metal objects from zombies in order to make your life a hell of a lot easier. They're also very good against- is that a pogo stick zombie? Oh come on! Beating the final fog stage unlocks the last set of levels for the game. As well as one of my favorite plants in the whole thing, the cabbage pulse, which you'll need for what comes next the roof. Given that the roof is at an unfortunate angle, pea shooters aren't going to help you anymore, so the cabbage poles are there as their replacement. You're also now further limited in where you can place plants, because unsurprisingly you didn't think to put grass on your roof. And it's here you're introduced to the most fucking annoying zombie in the entire game, the bungee zombies, who descend from the heavens to ruin your fun by stealing your plants. Yeah, thanks dickhead! Other new plants at your disposal are the kernel poles, which do the exact same thing as the cabbages, but also sometimes throw butter to slow zombies down, but only when they feel like it. There's the coffee bean, which enable you to wake up mushrooms during the day. But I know you never cheat on the cabbage pots like that, right? The garlic, which smells so bad that the zombies retreat to another lane. Can you imagine how bad something would have to smell for a walking corpse to want nothing to do with it? And finally, the marigold, which spawns silver and gold coins because they started running out of ideas. Oh, and the zombies brought a ladder this time. Good luck with that. I like how in this level, Crazy Dave just straight up tells you that you're going to hate it. <laughs> Full on the developers just being like, yeah, we know you hate them. Fuck you. It's only in level 6 that you're finally given a means to defend yourself against the scourge of bungee zombies with the umbrella leaf. Yeah, fuck off! Continuing the trend of irritating enemies is the catapult zombie, who must have been murdered by sunflowers or something because they freaking hate those things. The final three roof levels are where you should start to get a bit worried. But nah, man, you'll be fine. You have the marigold now. It can spawn coins. The eighth stage introduces this ginormous zombie behemoth thing, which I swear just does not die until they've taken out your entire row of plants, which they can do in one hit, by the way. And if that wasn't bad enough, they also throw their crutch fruit at you. It's likely also worth mentioning that you don't have any lawn mowers on the roof because even a guy that owns five of them isn't that crazy. So there's nothing to bail you out this time if one of them happens to get past all your plants, which I definitely didn't find out the hard way, no. Nope. No! Beating this unlocks the Melon Pult, the most powerful catapult in the game that is of course also the most expensive. I swear there's nothing more satisfying than using these, and even though you'll probably spend half the round just trying to get one of them, they are totally worth it. And this all takes us to the final boss of the game. <laughs> Oh my god, Crazy Dave is dead! The Zomb Boss has to be one of my favorite boss fights in any game I've ever played. 
All right, never mind. You son of a bitch! The pattern for this fight is that he'll drop random zombies at you before eventually dipping his head down to see if he's killed you yet, allowing you to beat the shit out of him with your ice shrooms and chilies. Oh, and sometimes he'll casually throw a camper van at you. Don't worry about it, he just does that. And I've gone far too long without acknowledging the absolute banger that is Brainiac Maniac. <laughs> Man, that is one strong ass roof. This stage makes me wish Plants vs Zombies had more boss fights in it because it's just so much fun and easily my favorite level in the game. Even if I'd arguably say the conveyor belt makes it a little bit too easy. The surprises aren't over yet though because beating him awards you with this absolute gem. I beat the final level over and over again just to hear this music video. I loved it that much. Plants vs Zombies also does offer some post-game content if you're still not sick of it by this point, such as all of those cool plant upgrades you totally ignored like the gloom shrooms, cattails, spike rocks, winter melons, and a fucking laser cannon. There's some game modes you can unlock too, like survival and new game plus, as well as the zen garden where you can tend to plants in exchange for like 10 cents, which I swear was a lot more exciting when I was younger. What I appreciate most about this game is that they introduce a new element to mix the gameplay up in almost every single new level. And the fact that I was able to beat this entire game in two days for this video and still wasn't tired of it by the end just goes to show how well made it is. So let's see how they ruined all that good stuff in Plants vs Zombies 2. You'd think that by adding new plants, new zombies, and a time travel gimmick that allows for even more creativity with the level layouts and enemies that it'd be very hard to go wrong. But oh no, PopCap found a way to cram this game with as many in-app purchases and microtransactions as humanly possible, to the point where it's too much of a hindrance for me to actually enjoy the game. I remember being super excited for Plants vs Zombies 2 and then being so incredibly disappointed with this ad ridden monstrosity that's clearly more concerned with begging for your money than actually being a good game. So of course that meant I'd always just go back to replaying the first one. It's super disappointing but not unsurprising to see what's become of these main series of games. And the upcoming arrival of the third entry in the series doesn't make me very excited at this point. As for Garden Warfare, I've never actually played those games but I hear nothing but good things about them so I'd love to check them out one day, especially if it means I can shoot football zombies in the face. And with that, Thank you so much for joining me in this surprisingly long look into one of my favorite apps of all time. An app I had just as much fun playing as I did making this video on it. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.